What if I told you the spinal cord had a brain of its own? What if I told you completely paralyzed people could walk again? How is that possible? Well, that's possible because the spinal cord really does have a brain of its own. It's a breakthrough discovery. Two people who are completely paralyzed are now walking again, giving new hope to those with spinal cord injury. When someone has a spinal cord injury, as devastating as that is, the spinal cord isn't completely destroyed. It's only where the bone is broken that the neurons die. And unfortunately, that is thousands of neurons. However, many more millions of neurons below the injury are alive, healthy, communicating with each other, and in the right conditions can function. It's that circuitry below the injury where our research is focused. There has long been controversy about how our movements are controlled. As far back as a hundred years, research has shown that mammals' locomotor movements, such as walking, hopping, flying, or swimming, has been controlled by the spinal cord. But many people believed that miraculous brain of ours controlled all our movements. But on the other hand, why would evolution create an entire other part of our nervous system to do something the spinal circuitry could already do? Thus, the controversy. For the first 15 years, we focused on what was already known in experiments from other species, including mammals. Those studies looked at mammalian locomotion. And they focused on situations where the spinal cord was completely transected. And that means completely cut off from brain signals. And if you retrain that animal exactly right, those animals could relearn to get their locomotor skill back again, even when the brain spinal cord is completely disconnected. Could the human spinal cord do that the same thing? Well, we did hundreds of experiments in over 200 people, and we got really positive results. They regained motor function similar to what the animals did. However, they didn't step independently. So you could argue, if these motor complete paralyzed people weren't stepping independently, maybe the human spinal cord wasn't as sophisticated. Maybe humans really did rely more on the brain than all other species. Could it be that the mo motor cortex was the primary controller of all human movement? The research at the time suggested that unless you found a way to regenerate those lost neurons across that injury, paralyzed people had no hope to regain movement. For the next 10 years, our team challenged that hypothesis and our next step was to modulate the central state of excitability. That's a scientific term. When you move, when your body moves, it needs to be alert and excited in order to move the body the way you want it to. So we decided to add some excitement. And the reason we needed to do that, because when a person has a spinal cord injury, their central state of excitability tends to be low. So what we did is we took an epidural stimulator and placed it under the spine and over the spinal cord. And this is Rob. He was the first person to get an epidural stimulator. 
Now, when Rob was implanted, he didn't expect to walk again. He participated in this research because he was going to help advance the research and maybe help someone walk in the future. When we searched for these circuits in Rob, stimulating his spinal cord to see if he could step, something unexpected happened. He stood right away. And so we changed the experiment. We did something different because we thought maybe this could help him. We trained him to stand. And he learned to stand. And even though he was motor complete, he learned to stand without any physical assistance, only needing something to help him balance. And then Rob transformed from research subject to scientist. He asked, what if? What if I tried to move my toe? And then Rob retrained his spinal cord to move his toe. And that was stunning. I didn't even believe it. I couldn't believe it. How did that happen? How did that happen? Well, the way that happened is there's a connection between the brain and the spinal cord that communicates and makes us move. When there's a spinal cord injury, that connection is broken, and we can become paralyzed. Well, what our research is doing is it's creating a new connection. But that connection doesn't really know how to function when there's small signals and when it's using the stimulator. So it has to be retrained. So now, Rob is standing, and he can move his toe, when we trained him to step, he lost his ability to stand. But don't worry, we retrained him to stand again. And he regained his ability to stand. So this told us that how we trained was critical. And this told us that the spinal cord could learn, it could forget, and it could relearn. So, we took everything that we had learned and we realized that we had to create a new protocol. And so we realized that we had to take intent and we had to integrate it into our protocol. And we took the intent and we had them think about stepping every time they took a step in the training. And we knew how you trained was important. So we took the protocol to practice standing and stepping and had them do it together, do it every day. And we asked the question, was the spinal cord smart enough to learn how to step and stand together? Could it learn both those motor tasks at once? And now I'd like to introduce you to Jeff and Kelly, two of the people who were introduced to this new training protocol who were completely paralyzed. This is Jeff. He's 35 years old, and he was injured in a mountain biking accident seven years ago, and he was completely paralyzed as a quadriplegic. Jeff underwent this training protocol, and he was able to relearn, relearn to step independently with only using balance assist. But he might tell you, more importantly, he now doesn't need any help to get out of bed in the morning. And this has made his life so much more independent. And I'd like to introduce you to Kelly. She's 22 years old, and she was injured two years ago. Her truck flipped over many times in a motor vehicle accident, leaving her a paraplegic. Now, we learned something about the central state of excitability, too little or too much and it can take you much longer to relearn to walk. But Kelly, she ended up having just the right amount. And so she actually learned to walk 
earlier than anybody else. And after just 15 weeks, she was able to, 15 weeks of training, she was able to uh, relearn to walk. And in fact, Kelly has been able to take this home, and she's walking in her home and community. <laughs> Kelly and Jeff have defied the status quo. People that we thought were completely paralyzed aren't completely paralyzed anymore. There's more that we can do for people with spinal cord injury than we ever thought before. The spinal cord, it's there, it's healthy, it's smart, and it's listening. And it can reconnect to the brain with a new pathway that we didn't know was there before. Rob still isn't walking, but he's still committed to the cause. He created the tipping point for that research and for that we'll be forever grateful. He pushed that epidural stimulation technology to the point to where he was able to move his toe whenever he wanted. And if he hadn't done that, we would have missed the discovery that the spinal cord can relearn how to connect to the brain if it's given a new pathway. And if we hadn't discovered that, Jeff and Kelly wouldn't be able to walk as they are today. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention all the other people who participated in my re research who are also not walking today. And their contributions to the study were just as valuable. For those people who are paralyzed and who've participated in our research to help other people who are paralyzed, we thank them for their courage, their dedication, and their selflessness. There's a lot more work to be done, but there's new discoveries just over the horizon, and there is great hope for those who are living with paralysis today. Thank you.